Hey, folks, how you doing? This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. How you doing? You're good? It's Thursday, the 22nd of August, 2013. I want to give out a big old thank you and a big shout out to Nick Tucker over at Distorted Reality. Yes, Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Also, distortedreality.podbean.com. Check that out as well. Lots of things going on. I'm doing some technical things here behind the scenes, trying to trying to be a little better technology-wise. The uh, big news that we see is uh, the chemical attack in... Uh, that was my cell phone, folks. That was <laughs> yeah, turn down cell phone before broadcasting. Um, the big uh, chemical attack uh, in uh, Syria. Uh, granted, uh, kids are killed. Uh, some experts are saying that some of the things they see are uh, not quite right. All evidence that I've seen so far shows a false flag. Yes, even Russia pointed it out as a false flag. So, what are we doing, folks? Okay, what are we doing? How do we... How do we sit here and put up with this bull crap? How, how, how do we do this? How... how how can we just sit by and let this criminal mafia government that we live under pull these things off? What, 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 what is it going to take to say enough's enough? I mean, seriously. Is there anything that is going to wake you up? You know, um... I've talked to people and some people have said, you know, uh, well, you know, yeah, I know there's bad things going on, but what can I do about it? What can you do about it? I'm doing a, a online radio show. Nick Tucker does an online radio, uh, or online podcast soon to be live. More information coming on that. Now, what can you do about it? You can get out, you can go to your city councils, you can go to your uh, county board of supervisors, bring them the evidence in your hands and you show it to them and you show them the fluoride in the water is deadly. The GMOs in the food are deadly. Every, Obamacare is a, a total fraud and piece of crap. I mean, you throw it in their face. They're throwing it in our face. They're shoving it down our throat. We can shove it back. Or we can tell them to shove it. That's what we can do. A lot of people say, oh, I don't want to upset the thing. I, I don't, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to be inconvenienced. Shut up. Do you think it was inconvenient for those people in 1861 when the army went to these farms and said, hey, we need your help defending this country? Do you think it was inconvenient for them? Yes, it was. They had a ranch and a farm to till and feed a family and all of this. But they went because of the fact that it's their country, too. And what, what are people nowadays doing? Oh, my God. GMOs, uh, fluoride in the water, video games teaching you how to, you know, desensitize yourself to the, to the pain and, and killing and all of that. And, uh, folks, <laughs> I'll be back after this. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and fact that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions 
of Times More. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about late night in the Midlands.com. Become a member and be informed. Come listen to Journey into Light with your host, Michael Long. The show is about looking into the afterlife. Where do our souls go from here? Where are the true messages from above? Everybody is family, so make a journey into light with Michael Long, your home. With the best guests on the show, they share the love with all who call in and those who are in the chat room. That's Journey into Light with Michael Long, Sunday through Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, on blogtalkradio.com slash journey into the light. Eastland Sci-Fi Radio Theater is looking for you. Are you a voice actor looking to hone your abilities? Are you a writer looking for actors? Then Eastland Sci-Fi Radio Theater is for you. If you are a voice actor or a writer of sci-fi themed radio plays, send your information to Eastland Radio Films at USA.com. For more information, go to Eastland Radio Films slash Eastland Films for more information. If you are a voice actor, send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Films at USA.com. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce right here for the Views Expressed Live. How am I sounding? Got some technical issues going on. I thought I'd switch out this. And, um, anyway, if, you had, if I had my webcam on, you can see. But I don't, so you can't. So there you go. <laughs> it's Thursday, the 22nd of August, 2013. And as always, I am here to tell you what's going on behind the curtain. I got a small short video up on my YouTube channel at ULC Rev 62 called Behind the Curtain. You might want to go check that one out. I don't pump it up so much or promote it so much because it's really short. I'm planning on doing a longer video around 10 15 minutes long but uh you know music copyright yada 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 that kind of thing i gotta deal with all that so anyway i may even be like dan Dix up in uh up there in canada and write my own damn music <laughs> you know so uh anyway hey let's go over to the speaker side and things and see who uh popped in there of course we have Nick Tucker from Distorted Reality. Yes, Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Also, distortedreality.podbean.com. I, uh, him and I talked just a little while ago on his show. And uh, go check that out. A uh, little garbled. little, you know, the sound is not the greatest in the world. But you can definitely understand what we're talking about. So, anyway. And, of course... There's always uh, my loyal listener, 
<laughs> Glenn from Sacramento. Yes, he also listens to uh, Spencer Hughes, spencerhughes.net for more information. Spencer Hughes may have a show on tonight on Spreaker.com uh, tonight or something like that. I don't know. He's going to be sitting in for uh, someone at KSFO uh, radio in San Francisco. So you may hear him on the air tomorrow at 5 a.m. So who knows? So anyway, onward and upward to greater and better things. Um, hopefully within the next, uh, I don't know. I don't know when I'm not going to put a date on it. <laughs> I'm not going to, uh, you might just hear Nick Tucker right here. So, don't know. Just stay tuned. We're working out the details. Just hang on. Just... <laughs> so anyway, as you can tell, folks, I'm ha I have a good time doing this show. I have an excellent time doing this show because of the fact that I like to keep it light sometimes. And sometimes, if you've heard my past broadcast, <laughs> not so much. Because here's the point. Gallows humor. But I don't take my eye off the seriousness of what's going on. A, false flag attack in Syria. False flag chemical attack in Syria. Coinciding with, coincidental? Who knows? With the IAEA inspectors from the UN going into Syria. And then bang, the next day, a chemical attack. Well, how convenient. Okay. Okay. I mean, you can go and look all this up yourself. I'm just telling you what's in the news. I'm telling you what's behind the curtain. That's all. Go check this stuff out yourself. Please. Don't want to be rude. Somebody says, you sound rude. Somebody emailed me, actually, and said, you know, you should uh, change the way you, you say things. No, I'm going to be straightforward. I shoot from the hip. That's the way it is. If I'm rude... I don't know what to tell you, but I will apologize. <laughs> Not for what I say, but for how I say it. You know, in other words, it, it, it's, it's, I do get a little riled up. I do get pissed off because people are trying to take away my rights, trying to take away your rights. What the hell are you going to do? Sit there on your hands and go, uh, I don't know. I think things are just fine. No. No. Uh-uh. No, things are not fine. <laughs> things are not fine. Um, and I, I, I don't, I can't, can't I, I don't know. You know, I get so tongue tied because of, I'm going to say this because of stupid people. Well, people aren't stupid. They do stupid things, but they're not stupid. No, no, no. If they do stupid things, they're stupid, okay? Because they're not thinking, they're not aware, they're not awake. Well, I get right down to it, you know? I, I just, I feel like looking at them and, and just... What is your major malfunction, num nuts? I mean, seriously. Okay? <laughs> I mean... <sighs> Onward and upward. I don't want to keep ranting and, and, and going off on tangents and crap like that. So let's get on with the show. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. And thank you, Nick, for being in the chat room on the Spreaker side of things. Appreciate that very, very much. From thestateweekly.com. Go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Check this out. From thestateweekly.com, it's time to accept that America is a police state. I've been telling people that for years, and they're just looking at me like, oh, you're one of them, aren't you? Where's your tinfoil hat there, cowboy? I don't have one, because I see reality for what it is, and I question the things that make me... You know, put little hairs up on the back of my neck. From the State Weekly, Andrea Dancer uh, wrote this. It's time to accept that America is a police state. These days, it doesn't seem to take too long to find yet another example of a rising police state in America. However, 
That assertion is often met with resistance and the claims that calling the U.S. a police state is just fear-mongering and, after all, we are still the freest nation in the world. But are we? Is calling the United States a police state just anti-government rhetoric used to incite fear against the government? Or are there legitimate signs and warning signs that the police state is here and only going to get worse? So, that there is no confusion in looking at the signs and so that everyone is on the same page, here are some definitions that will shed some light on the way in which the police state is defined. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a police state as one in which a political unit characterized by repressive governmental control or political, economic, or social life usually by an arbitrary exercise of power by police and especially secret police in place of regular operation of administrative and judicial organs of the government according to publicly known legal pr procedures. Arbitrary, number one, depending on choice or discretion specifically, determinable by decision of a judge or tribunal rather than defined by statute. Number two, a rising from unrestrained exercise of the will, caprice, or personal preference given to expressing, expressing opinions that arise thus or to selected at random or as a typical example, be based on a random or convenient selection or choice rather than on reason or nature. From Wikipedia, the term police state describes a state in which the government exercises rigid and repressive controls over the social, economic, and political life of the population. A police state typically exhibits elements of totalitarianism and social control, and there is usually little or no distinction between the law and the exercise of political power by the executive. Totalitarian or totalitarianism means one a of or relating to centralized control by an autocratic leader or hierarchy or b of or relating to a political regime based on subordination of the individual to the state and strict control of all aspects of the life andrea writes here in the article at thestateweekly.com. Oftentimes, people think of a police state as one in which martial law has been declared or that a 24-hour lockdown in place. Many others think of Nazi Germany when they hear the term, but th think it can't happen in the modern-day democratic country just for clarification. Uh, the Founding Fathers designed this country to be a constitutional republic, not a democracy. However, Police states do not just happen overnight. A country does not uh, go from being free or relatively free to a police state in a day. The noose gets tighter and tighter slowly enough until one day you run out of air and realize you are at the mercy of a totalitarian regime. But is that really happening in America? Here are just some, but certainly not all, of the many signs and warning signs that indicate we may be approaching full police statehood. I had to run down this. Uh, it, it's a pretty lengthy article, folks, so I would encourage you to go read this yourself and look at what is there. But let me give you this. I got plenty of time. I got two hours. Let me read this. I'll get to the bottom of the hour break, and if I have to stop, I'll come back and finish up. The question is, but is this really ha happening in, the, uh, in America? Here are just some, but certainly not all, of the many signs and warnings that indicate we are approaching full police statehood. Sign? Whistleblowers are killed, jailed, or have to seek asylum in non-extradition countries. Hastings, Snowden, Manning. What the hell is up with Bradley Manning? Now want to be called Chelsea? Not going to get into that, folks. Occurrences in the USA. Here are just six 
of the many whistleblowers that have been charged with violating the Espionage Act since Obama has taken office. Thomas Drake. Drake is a former senior executive of the National Security Agency and was charged with violating the Espionage Act. Okay. After going through the proper legal channels to disclose widespread domestic illegal surveillance, mismanagement of funds in the billions, billions, folks, with a B, gross waste of taxpayer money and massive corruption. Drake at one point was facing up to 35 years in prison. The government ended up dropping all of the charges against Drake in return for Drake's agreement to plead guilty to a misdemeanor of misusing the agency's computer system. Agreed not to seek any jail time. Drake was sentenced to one year of probation and community service. The judge hearing the case called the actions of the government, quote unquote, unconscionable. Number two, Stephen Jinwa Kim. In 2010, Kim was indicted on charges of making false statements and disclosing unauthorized information on matters of national defense. Kim is accused of violating the Espionage Act when he worked for the State Department as an advisor on nuclear proliferation and gave classified information about North Korea to Fox News reporter James Rosen. He has been indicted by a federal grand jury, but his case is still currently pending. James Hitzelberger, Hitzelberger, a Navy contract uh, linguist, was charged under uh, 18 U.S. Code 793E with unauthorized retention of national defense information while serving in Bahrain. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison and is currently uh, in jail as his trial continues. Bradley Manning, PFC Manning, is a U.S. soldier who was accused of leaking over 700,000 classified documents, battlefield videos, files, and cables. Manning was found guilty of 20 criminal counts in July and sentenced to 35 years in prison on August 21st, 2013. Shammy K. Liberowitz, Liberowitz, is a former FBI employee who worked as a Hebrew translator and was charged with leaking approximately 200 pages of classified documents of transcribed uh, conversations that the FBI had obtained through wiretaps of the Israeli embassy in Washington to blogger Richard Silverstein. Uh, Silverstein noted in an interview with the New York Times that Lieberwitz released the information because, quote, of concerns about Israel's aggressive efforts to influence Congress and public opinion and fears that Israel might strike nuclear facilities in Iran, unquote. He was sentenced to 20 months in 2010. Edward Snowden. Snowden is a computer specialist who worked for the NSA and CIA. Snowden revealed several top-secret government programs of the U.S. and U.K., such as the NSA's PRISM program to the press. Snowden has been charged with two counts of espionage, uh, two counts of the Espionage Act and theft of government property. Snowden fled first to Hong Kong and then went to Russia, where he received asylum for at least one year and was offered employment there as well. If found guilty, he faces up to 30 years in prison if the United States can get their hands on him long enough for a trial. Sign. Increased surveillance of citizens, i.e. Big Brother is watching you. Occurrences in the U.S. In the USA, while the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution states... Quote, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. Unquote. Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution. There are so many examples of the violation of this to name here. There are a few glaring obvious ones that have to be called out. By the way, there's a video. Uh, I'm coming down to the bottom of the hour break, so I'll get into these uh, following ones here after the break. But there was a video of a judge uh, telling someone that there is basically he's saying the words probable cause are not in the Constitution in, in, in the Fourth Amendment. They're clearly right there, but upon probable 
cause, supported by oath or affirmation. So the judge is wrong. Anybody else that says that it isn't in there is wrong. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> anyway, excuse me. Uh, never eat before you <laughs> do a live broadcast. Um, anyway, I, um, like I said, the, uh, <clears throat> the I'm going to go to the bottom of the hour break. And, uh, and I want to lead out with this. There's always going to be people that are going to look at me, look at Nick Tucker, probably anybody else, you know, in, in the alternative media and say that we're wrong. I always say, prove yourself right. Only because of the fact that, number one, anything that I talk about, anything that I see, the headlines, the stories, the articles, whatever it is, I have to read it. Okay, sometimes I read it here for the first time on air, but I'm reading it and I give you what I know about it. And I go do some more research and I dig, 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 dig until I get enough information to uh, it, it's it's five points of truths that I have. I read it once. I research it to verify what it is in other areas, such as, you know, if it's an article from RT, I go to, I try to find it at Associated Press or some other outlet. That's the second, you know, thing that I do. The third thing I do is look at the information, take bits and pieces out of the original article that I'm reading and go research those little elements and connect the dots. Then the fourth, fourth thing I do is real simple, if I can say it. <laughs> the fourth thing I do is real simple. I clarify it by waiting a day or so and see if either the state-run media or the alternative media picks it up. More than likely, one of those two is going to pick it up. And that's probably where I got it from. They're probably going to follow up with their information. So... I use other things to verify what it is. In other words, verify, 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 verify. And then the fifth thing I do is I tell you guys about it. <laughs> okay. You know, and it's always, I, I question everything now. Anything that I read at Yahoo or RT or AP or any number of those outlets, even in some of the alternative media, I question these things. And I dig, 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 dig. And the one place I don't go to is Snopes.com. No, I don't go there. Nope. Now, <clears throat> going to the uh, Spreaker chat, uh, Glenn and Nick are talking, and I want to give my little two cents worth on uh, Jesse Ventura's uh, conspiracy theory. Glenn says he seemed to never actually prove anything without a doubt. And that's true, but he leaves it as I do, and Nick does, and other people I hear do as well. They leave it up to the listener. They leave it up to the viewer. Here's this information. Plausible, probable, possible. This is what it is. Here, we're showing you this. You go out and figure it out. You go out and do the research. Is there underground cities everywhere? Is there a mass underground base under Denver International Airport? Is there things going on there that we're not aware of? Well, I am aware of it, but yes, there are things going on. Did you notice that they finally just came out and said Area 51 was for all the, like, the, the, the uh, you know, uh, SR-71 and all of the secret planes and stuff? I've known that for 40 years. <laughs> I've known that since I was 12, 13 years old, okay? I, I, yeah, I, it's, come on. <laughs> I've known this. Were there aliens out there? Were there any, I, some people say there were, you know? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't have that information on me at the moment, but that's uh, for another show. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know, folks. I, I don't know what else to tell you. My mother told me three things and other than I love you. She said, figure it out. That's what I'm telling you folks to do. I'm telling you what's behind the curtain. I'm giving you all this. 
I think you people are smart enough to go figure it out on your own. I'll be back right after this. Want to know what's happening all around us? You do? Great! Come check out the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, Friday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. Forever Me by Thomas Amo. Hannah Richards isn't your typical 16-year-old at Wichita Falls High. Fashion, trends, cosmetic, and style are unimportant to her. An avid reader, guitar player, and classic movie and television buff, Hannah marches to the beat of her own drum. Visible only to her father, the town sheriff, and her two best friends, Lauren and Haley, Hannah lives a simple, unpampered life as an Eastie. After coming to the aid of Taylor Monroe, a popular member of the Stilettos at school, and a series of misunderstandings with her friends, Hannah is forced to reinvent herself. She quickly gets caught up in a life much different than the one she knows, where status, glamour, makeup, and appearance and acceptance become her masters. And what of the dark secret that haunts the streets of Wichita Falls? Can Hannah survive the lies, deceit, jealousy, and rage that are now waiting for her around every corner? Will she succumb to the pressures of popularity? Or will she be crushed under the heels of the stilettos? High school is hard enough just being yourself, let alone trying to be someone you're not. Forever Me by Thomas Amo. Available on the Kindle at Amazon.com. Listen to DJ Russ on Rap More Than Words, where songs like the Black Eyed Peas don't stop the party. This is that original. This has no identical. You can't hack my digital future aboriginal. And flow right. Let it roll. And many more of your rap hits right here on Spreaker. Get your morning started with the morning brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to Radio Rock the Blitz dot blogspot dot com. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. How you doing? Let me continue on where I left off at thestateweekly.com, an article that you can find on Free America Radio on Facebook. Click on the link there and follow along if you'd like. An article entitled, It's Time to Accept That America is a Police State. That's number one, folks. Open up your eyes and see what's going on. Okay. I want to thank Nick Tucker for having me on uh, his show earlier today. Man, did we talk a lot about a lot of things. Please go to distortedreality.podbean.com or Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Thank you. I'm at the point in this article where it says, sign, increase surveillance of citizens, i.e. Big Brother is watching you. 
Occurrences in the USA, while the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution states the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, shall not be violated and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution. There are so many examples of the violation of this to name here. There are a few glaring obvious ones that have to be called out. Number one, the NSA teams up with DEA to prosecute citizens. Reuters recently broke the story that the Drug Enforcement Aid, uh, Administration is being hand-fed information obtained by the NSA and used in the arrest and prosecution of American citizens. Number two, NSA programs prison and Blarney. I never heard about Blarney. Did you hear about Blarney? While many people have heard about PRISM being talked about on the news, few have heard of Blarney, a clandestine program that is being run concurrently and alongside PRISM. Blarney is NSA's phone surveillance program, which captures uh, cumulative metadata. PRISM, Prism re retrieves the actual content within the communication. Hey, NSA, kiss my ass. Number three, internet monitoring. That's why I said what I just said, folks. From the Wall Street Journal, see? It's not just, you know, Reuters or AP or Infowars.com. No, 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 no. It's all over the place, folks. You have to read. You have to look. From the Wall Street Journal, quote, the National Security Agency, which possesses only limited legal authority to spy on U.S. citizens, has built a surveillance network that covers more Americans' internet communications than officials have publicly disclosed, current and former officials say. The system has the capacity to reach roughly 75% of all U.S. internet traffic in the hunt. For foreign intelligence, including a wide array of communications by foreigners and Americans. And in some cases, it retains the written content of emails sent between citizens within the U.S. And also filters domestic phone calls made with Internet technologies, these people say. The NSA's filtering carried out with telecom, uh, telecom companies is designed to look for communications that either originate or end abroad or are entirely foreign but happen to be passing through the U.S. But officials say the system's broad reach makes it more likely that purely domestic communications will be incidentally intercepted and collected in the hunt for foreign ones. D did you understand that, folks? You understand that? You got, you got that? Did, did that sink in yet, folks? Well, get this one. From RT News. By the way, RT, Russian television. Mm -hmm. Number four. Drones will be used for domestic surveillance from RT News. The FBI uses drones for domestic surveillance purposes. The head of the agency told Congress earlier or early Wednesday, Robert Mueller, the director of Federal Bureau of Investigations, confirmed to lawmakers that the FBI owns several unmanned aerial vehicles but has not ado uh, adopted any strict policy or guidelines yet to govern the use of the controversial aircraft. Quote, does the FBI use drones for surveillance on U.S. soil, unquote? Senator Chuck Grassley, the Republican of Iowa, asked Mr. Mueller uh, during an oversight hearing on Capitol Hill Wednesday before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Take a wild guess as to what Mueller's answer was. Quote, unquote, yes. Mueller responded bluntly, adding that the FBI's operations of, drone, of drones is, quote, unquote, very seldom. From a recent GOA report, quote, domestically state and local law enforcement entities represent the greatest potential users of small UAS unmanned 
aircraft systems in the near term because they can offer a simple and most or uh, a cost effective solution for airborne law enforcement activities. Just hold on to that thought, folks. Just, just let that sink in for a minute. Our president, our dictator-in-chief, is over in other countries blowing the crap out of kids with drones and, and other civilians. And they're using them over here to spy on us for surveillance purposes. Okay? By the way, those drones that you see, the Predator drones and the other ones that you see, oh, those aren't the only drones they have, folks. There's ones that are much, much smaller I'm not going to tell you how I know, but I know. Okay? It's called research, actually. There's other ways I found out, but I've done my research. Number five. RFID chips being used to monitor students. Remember a few months back that Texas student was, uh, you know, the mother, something got blown up all out of proportion and the student took off her, you know, uh, uh, you know, ID, which had the RFID chip in it. And the mother got all pissed off with the school and yeah, all that mess. RFID chips being used to monitor students from U.S. News. Here it is. A public school district in Texas can require students to wear locator chips when they are on school property, a federal judge ruled on Tuesday in a case raising technology-driven privacy concerns among liberal and conservative groups alike. U.S. District Judge Orlando Garcia said in the San Antonio Northside School District had the right to expel sophomore Andrea Hernandez, 15, from J High School because she refused to wear the device, which is required of all students at the Magnet School. I believe that's an old uh, news, and I think the mother, I don't know, somebody's going to have to send me the info on this as well. Uh, I'll go look it up too. Uh, I believe the mother pulled her out of school and is homeschooling her. I'm not quite sure about that. Number six. Hey, people, if I tell you I don't know, I'll, if I don't know, I'll tell you. you know, if, uh, that's just the way it is. <clears throat> Number six. Automa automated license plate readers. From the ACLU, a little notice surveillance technology designed to track the movements of every passing driver is fast proliferating on American streets. Automatic license plate readers mounted on police cars or on objects like road signs and bridges use small high speed cameras to photograph thousands of plates per minute. Thousands of plates per minute. The information captured by the readers, including the license plate number, the date, time, location of every scan is being collected and sometimes pulled into regional sharing systems. As a result, enormous databases of innocent motorist location information are growing rapidly. This information is often retained for years and even indefinitely with a few or no restrictions to protect privacy rights. Can you say Bluffdale, Utah, NSA data, uh, data facility? The, um, see folks, I just want to just go off and pull out what hair I got left. So <laughs> as I, as I told Nick Tucker earlier, man, it makes you feel like going into the ring and clotheslining somebody. You get so upset about this stuff. Sign increased. Oh, get this one, folks. Go check this out. Really? Before I read this to you, go check out federal protective services. Homeland Security Police. Sign, increased militarization of police and police brutality. Occurrences in the USA again. While there is way too many to list here, here are 10 examples of increasing brutal behavior from the boys in blue. 
Number one, police taser a man to get him off the roof. This was yesterday. Choke and grab him face down across a staircase, killing him. Number two, two Davenport officers beat down woman shoplifting suspect caught on camera. Number three, officers kill mentally disabled men, get away with it due to lack of training. Number four, police taser a pregnant woman. Number five, 95 year old vet refuses medical treatment. Cops kill him. Number six, cop punches 14 year old mentally disabled girl. Number seven, cop, cop shoots man in back, claims self defense. I believe that one was from, uh, oh, Maybe not. It says cop shoots man in back, claims self-defense, and it was in Dallas, Texas. I just put my cursor over it and read the little thing that popped up. <clears throat> number eight, defenseless man beaten to death by cops, witnesses say. And number nine, graphic, officer shot an unarmed man 11 times, cleared of any wrongdoing. And number 10, the beating death of kelly thomas sign powerful and continuing nationalism totalitarian regimes love their slogans symbols and images to drill in nationalism into their subjects folks remember this go back in history to nazi germany what does nazi stand for national uh what is it um national socialist That's what it means. National socialist. Okay. Nationalism, pumping up the country. This is, you know, we're doing this for the people, blah, blah, blah. Hitler said the same thing. By the way, we do have a national socialist party in the U.S. Along with the Communist Party, the United States of America. Did you know that? Occurrences in the USA from praising Obama in schools to a small child praying to Obama, which the video went viral last week. It seems like nationalism is one step away from a recognized national salute. Zeke Heil, anyone? Sign, increased restrictions against natural rights. Natural rights. Okay. Occurrences in the USA. Hey, Nick, if you're still in the chat room, thank you, by the way. appreciate that. Um, do you have any, down there in your area, do you have any signs up on poles or near buildings that say free speech area or free speech zones? Because we have a hell of a lot of them up here in, in Reno and Sparks, man, I'm telling you. Occurrences in the USA of increased restrictions against natural rights. Number one can get prosecuted for raw milk. Number two, quote unquote, free speech zones. Number three, judge can force porn stars to wear condoms as it's quote unquote constitutional. Number four, Arkansas Senate trying to ban certain tattoos and body piercings. That was in the news yesterday. Number five, state threatens jail for nutritional blogger. Number six, San Francisco law fines $500 for incorrect recycling. Incorrect recycling. Yeah, you heard that right. Number seven, ooh, Happy Meal toys banned. Thankfully, Mickey D's showed how easy it is to sidestep st such a ludicrous ban by charging 10 cents for the toy in banned areas. Number eight, I wouldn't eat at McDonald's anymore, folks. Just I'm just saying, naturalnews.com did a uh, story on their McNuggets, man. I'm telling you, just uh, stay away from there. Number eight, state-forced vaccines and increasingly difficult to opt out. Number nine, illegal to collect rainwater on property in some states. An Oregon man was sentenced to jail for collecting rainwater on his own property. Number 10, illegal to grow gardens, gardens destroyed. Yes, uh, a couple of people up in, uh, or somebody up in, uh, I can't remember the name of the town in Michigan, Oak Park, Michigan. And she had a garden, a vegetable food garden out in her yard. Guess what? The cops came over and destroyed it. 
Look up S-510. It was defeated in the Senate and the House. It was then put in as a writer under another agricultural bill a couple of years ago and signed into law. You can no longer grow a garden in your, on your property. It's not your property anyway, but you can't grow a garden to feed yourself. No, it's not your property. Yeah, you heard me right. If you pay property tax every year on what you think is your property, no, 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 no. That property tax, consider it this way. You're renting that property from the government. <clears throat> Sign. This is the last one, folks. Sign. Increasing dictatorial behavior of leaders. Holy crap. <laughs> Dictator. That's an understatement of the millennium. Okay. <laughs> I mean, serious. Our president, our president makes Hitler look like a freaking choir boy, okay? Well, maybe not, but you get the point. He comes into office in 2008, and within a matter of, what, two years, he jacks up the national debt? It was only, what, six or seven trillion dollars at the time from George Washington to George Bush, the second. And he jacks it up six trillion dollars. OK, so now we're sitting at almost 17 trillion dollars. OK, we're never going to pay that back, folks. I'm sorry. It's just never going to happen. Might as well declare bankruptcy and give this country over to the over to Russia and to China and to Mexico. Oh, wait. They already gave it to Canada as well. It's called the North American Union. Go look it up, folks. I'm not just sitting up here telling you, uh, you know, you're probably sitting back going, oh, that's bull crap. That never happened. Uh. I'm not going to go into it, but you can listen. Well, <laughs> I had to delete some of the shows because they were, you know, a couple of years old and I had to have some more space, but... Briefly, 2005, Baylor University, George Bush uh, of the United States, Prime Minister, uh, I believe it was Paul Martin of Canada, and Vicente Fox, President of Mexico, signed an IPP document creating on paper the foundation for a North American Union. 2009, President Obama, uh, Stephen Harper of Canada, and Felipe Calderon of Mexico uh, signed another document putting in the infrastructure of the North American Union. And all he has to do now is sign a few more pieces of paper, and we no longer have the United States of America. Okay? Sign, increasing, increasing dictatorial behavior of leaders, occurrences in the U.S. Number one, third term for Obama. From the leftist apologist site, The Daily Cost, there is a scenario, a nightmare scenario for RWNJs under which President Obama can legally and constitutionally win a third term as president of the United States. Of course, we should know that uh, Barack Obama is too honest and honorable a person to pursue this course of action, but do the RWNJs know that? Number two, no term limits for president. From Fox News Latino, Democratic uh, Congressman Jose Serrano has reintroduced a legislation to repeal the 22nd Amendment uh, to the Constitution, which would end term limits for U.S. presidents and pave the way for President Barack Obama to stay in the White House for a third term. While some claim that this will never happen and will never get passed, it should be noted that the same thing was once said about bills like the Patriot Act, the NDAA, and Obamacare. Number three, President Bypassing Congress and Traditional Means of Legislation from BenSwan.com. Obama is sidestepping Congress once again. This is what Ben Swan says. This time, the Unconstitutional Act is in an effort to raise $6 billion in new taxes to put Wi-Fi in public schools across America. Rather than waste his time with uh, Constitution and Congress, 
Obama is going straight to the FCC to lobby for the new taxes. The new tax will apply to every American who uses a cell phone. While there are many, 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 many more examples, this does not give anyone pause. This, I should say, this does give anyone pause to reflect on how many personal freedoms are being stripped away on a daily basis. With just a few examples given here, which are really just the tip of the iceberg, are you convinced America is or is quickly becoming a police state? Do you have any other examples you think should be added? Now, this person, there's comments there, folks, and I'll read you one because it says here, while I agree, this, this commenter for, for the article says this, while, while I agree with the overall sentiment of this article, it's poorly written, poorly sourced, and poorly thought out. The partisan theme underlying it really undermines the real issue here, which isn't a partisan issue, and many of the examples aren't even true. There's enough... Uh, going on to support the thesis such as this, but this article doesn't seem to grasp it. Not to mention that the stretching done to qualify the U.S. as a technical police state is tenuous at best, deliberately misleading at worst. Yeah, let's see. Can you say blind as a bat? I'm. That's not. A, that's my comment to that commenter. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Um, yeah, Glenn says that some economists, Glenn in the, uh, from Sacramento in the speaker chat says uh, some economists say it's uh, the national debt is up to $70 trillion. Uh, with derivatives and fake money they pull out of their, you know, behinds, uh, it's closer to somewhere uh, to about $2 quadrillion uh, in debt. Yeah, derivatives, uh, fake money, pull a figure out of the air and, you know, whatever. I had a person who was going to college for finance tell me that uh, derivatives weren't bad. Excuse me? Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're fake numbers. Hello? If I had $100 and there were 10 people, I would loan each person 10 bucks. But if I had $100... And with fractional reserve banking, I could tell one person, hey, I can give you this twenty, uh, this $100, uh, but you're going to have to pay it back with interest. You know, somebody else comes along. Yeah, okay, give me your money. Here's this and blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the, and, you know, can you say, uh, <laughs> uh, what was that guy that went to uh, prison for uh, Ponzi scheme? Bernard? Yeah, Bernard. Uh, anyway, onward and upward to bigger and hopefully brighter things. Holy crap, it's the top of the hour already. And I only got through at least two articles. <laughs> oh my God. What the? Or one article, actually. So, let me tell you what's coming up after the top of the hour break, shall I? <sighs> Fast food workers urged to stage nationwide strike. CBSnews.com. Of course, uh, Obamacare is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Let's just get back. Let's get behind it, shall we? Not. UPS announced that they will have to reduce health insurance plans provided to their employees because Obamacare makes their current health insurance plans drastically more expensive. Also, I mentioned this yesterday, too. San Diego Craigslist ad searches for, quote-unquote, surveillance role players. Yeah. You like that? <sighs> I can't, I, can we take a vacation and go to Hawaii or something? Can we just, <laughs> can we just go away now? <laughs> Man, I don't know, but it's not good. Folks, I'll be back after this. Want to know what's happening all around us? You do? Great. Come check out the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, Friday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. Forever Me, 
by Thomas Amo. Hannah Richards isn't your typical 16-year-old at Wichita Falls High. Fashion, trends, cosmetic, and style are unimportant to her. An avid reader, guitar player, and classic movie and television buff, Hannah marches to the beat of her own drum. Visible only to her father, the town sheriff, and her two best friends, Lauren and Haley, Hannah lives a simple, unpampered life as an Eastie. After coming to the aid of Taylor Monroe, a popular member of the Stilettos at school, and a series of misunderstandings with her friends, Hannah is forced to reinvent herself. She quickly gets caught up in a life much different than the one she knows, where status, glamour, makeup, and appearance and acceptance become her masters. And what of the dark secret that haunts the streets of Wichita Falls? Can Hannah survive the lies, deceit, jealousy, and rage that are now waiting for her around every corner? Will she succumb to the pressures of popularity? Or will she be crushed under the heels of the stilettos? High school is hard enough just being yourself, let alone trying to be someone you're not. Forever Me by Thomas Amor. Available on the Kindle at Amazon.com. Listen to DJ Russ on Rap More Than Words, where songs like the Black Eyed Peas don't stop the party. This is that original. This has no identical. You can't hack my digital future aboriginal. And flow right. Let it roll. And many more of your rap hits right here on Spreaker. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and fact that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions of times more. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Become a member and be informed. Come listen to Journey Into Light with your host, Michael Long. This show is about looking into the afterlife. Where do our souls go from here? What are the true messages from above? Everybody is family, so make a journey into light with Michael Long, your home. With the best guests on the show, they share the love with all who call in and those who are in the chat room. That's Journey Into Light with Michael Long, Sunday through Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, on blogtalkradio.com. Slash journey into the light. Eastland Sci Fi Radio Theater is looking for you. Are you a voice actor looking to hone your abilities? Are you a writer looking for actors? Then Eastland Sci Fi Radio Theater is for you. If you are a voice actor or a writer of sci-fi themed radio plays, send your information to Eastland Radio Films at USA.com. For more information, go to Eastland Radio Films dot Wix dot com slash Eastland Films for more information. If you are a voice actor, send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Films at USA.com.
morning to you. Wherever you're at in the world, this is the Views Express Live right here on Spreaker.com and also on FreeAmericaRadio.Weebly.com. Yes, thank you for being here. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pearson. It is the 22nd of August, 2013. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Appreciate all my listeners. I appreciate people popping in the chat room, including Glenn from Sacramento, who's obviously on his way home from work. He's going home. He's leaving. He's had enough for the day. (laughs) Also, Mr. Nick Tucker from Distorted Reality Network. Yes, Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Go to distortedreality.podbean.com. Dot com. Yes, thank you all for being here. Appreciate that very much. If you're on the website at freeamericaradio.weebly.com, you can scroll on down. And you'll see a uh, donate button there. Uh, you can donate to the Free America Radio Network because we're going to the next level. We just need a little help. That's all. Uh, also, there's a store there. If you want to promote your pap- patriotism, you can by buying merchandise to help out the network as well. Ah, yes, that would be awesome. I make zip out of this, folks. Okay, just all that. Everything that I get goes right into the show. I get nothing. Zip, zero, zilch, nada. Okay, nothing goes into my pocket at all. Nothing at all. Somebody asked me, well, why do you call it Free America Radio and you want people to donate? Well, free meaning that we are a free nation, America, meaning America, (laughs) you know, free America radio and it's online radio. So what the heck? There you go. Hey, a little FYI for you. I know many times uh, I've been asked over and over uh, and even here recently, uh, you know, Am I a Democrat? Am I a Republican? Am I this? Am I that? I'm nonpartisan, meaning nothing, meaning absolutely I, you know, the last time I voted was this last go around. And yeah, I, I'm going to say this, folks, and, and you, yeah, I know you're smart enough to go figure this one out. Your votes don't count at all. I'll tell you why. It's the big elites that buy the offices for the politicians you're seemingly voting for. Oh, yeah, they bought the office of the president back in 1913. Mm-hmm. President Woodrow Wilson, 1913. Go look it up. And they've been buying office space in Washington, D.C. ever since. So your votes don't count at all, ever. No, just... They did prior to 1871, but now they're, they don't. So 1871 was when uh, it went from the Constitution of the United States of America to the Corporation of the United States of America. A lot of people like Snopes.com don't go there. They're those, yeah, it's just worthless site, uh, disinformation and all that. But go look it up. Corporation of the United States of America, 1871. A lot of people say, well, no, it, it didn't do that. That's not what it's, that's not. It. Yeah, those people that say that took enough time to get their heads out of their you-know-whats to tell you that it's not right, that you're not right. Well, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be nice. (laughs) It's Thursday, folks. I'm going to be nice. Tomorrow, come check out the Wayne S. Pierce Show at 12 noon. I'm changing the time only because of the fact that the Wayne S. Pierce Show and the views expressed are changing. They're combining, and I keep thinking, why do I need two shows? So stay tuned for more information about that. You can be a part of that as well. Remember I talked about going to the next level Yes, stay tuned. I will tell you more. Anyway, go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Tomorrow, the Wayne S. Pierce Show at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. Actually, do this, folks. Go to, speaking of which, actually, go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. 
the Wayne S. Pierce Show on Facebook. Now, the reason why I want you to do that is because I got more articles over there. <laughs> I only put up so many on the Free America Radio Facebook page. So, <clears throat> check this out. From MrConservative.com. Obama's NSA spies uh, Obama's NSA spies on 75% of all internet traffic. Yeah, that's one article there you may want to check out. Also from unitedliberty.org. Obama administration wants to search your cell phone without a warrant. Off the grid news. Outrageous SWAT teams raid and destroy or uh, organic farm. SWAT teams uh, SWAT team raids and destroys organic farm. Talked about that in the first hour if you were with me that cops can now just come to your house if you're growing a garden to feed yourself and they'll destroy it because they don't they want you to eat the GMO and drink the fluoride. Oh, from the George Soros backed thinkprogress.org South Carolina city approves plan to exile its homeless. Oh, anybody living in uh, Columbia, South Carolina? Late night in the Midlands, Michael Vera. Go check that out. Late night in the Midlands.com. Foxnews.com says welfare pays more than minimum wage in most states. Isn't that lovely? <sighs> Just it's from non televised truth. Here it is, folks. Reports on chemical weapons used in Gota untrue. What? I always like to look at both sides of the spectrum because people you you can glean some information on both sides. But Mama didn't raise no fool. I do my homework. I check it out. And when my intuition that I've used for over 30 years puts little hairs on the back of my neck up, I know that somebody's lying. Everything that I've seen with this chemical uh, attack, this whatever happened here in Syria this morning or yesterday... Everything tells me, everything that I look at, physically look at, tells me it's a false flag. Period. Everything. But let me read this from non-televised truth. You can go uh, click on the link there on uh, the Wayne S. Pierce Show uh, Facebook page. A media source on Wednesday dismissed as untrue the news broadcast by some media outlets that chemical weapons have been used in the Gotha region in Damascus countryside. The source stressed that the report circulated by the TV channels of, <coughs> get this, Al Jazeera, Al Arabia, and Sky News, Sky News being the sister station and network of Fox News, among other channels, which are involved in the shredding or shedding of the Syrians' blood and supporting terrorism are completely baseless. The source said, The aim behind broadcasting such reports and news is to distract the UN Chemical Weapons in, uh, in Investigation Commission away from its mission. I wanted to put that up there for you to read what non-televised truth says about this stuff. First of all, Al Jazeera America has uh, now premiered in the U.S. to spread more of its propaganda. Al Arab Arabia and Sky News both are propaganda arms of the New World Order. The bottom line is, folks, Every single news outlet, including your local teleprompting, bobbleheaded, uh, biological androids that sit in front of 
you know, the camera talking to you on your nightly news are lying to you. Every single last one of them, they're all lying to you because they all have an agenda. That, I mean, bottom line. From in.news.yahoo.com. Now, remember, I read that article from uh, non, uh, what is that, non-televised truth. It's right there on the Wayne S. Pierce Show uh, Facebook page. This is from Yahoo. U.S., quote, backed plan to launch chemical weapon attack on Syria. Blame it on Assad government, unquote. That's from London, January 30th of this year. Okay, there's two articles right there showing the opposites. I, I always want to do that. Okay. Also from Fox Business, get this, folks. Members of the Federal Reserve's policy setting board were locked in a debate over the central bank over when the central bank should begin paring back its massive bond buying program at the last FOMC meeting, minutes released Wednesday reveal. The minutes said almost all, that's in quotes, FOMC members agreed the Fed should begin reducing its purchases of bonds later this year and conclude QE by the middle of 2014. However, one member said the central bank should signal it will begin cutting its purchases in the quote-unquote near future. Broadly speaking, the FOMC said the economy has expanded to a quote-unquote modest pace in the first half of the year, but worried about, get this, excessively light inflation. That's doublespeak, folks. That's doublespeak. Oh, and here's this. There's a video on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. Extinction plan for humanity deployed silent weapon system. Click on the video there on that page. So many things, people, that you need to understand. First of all, you're not stupid. And I say people are stupid, but I'm talking specifically to the listeners of my program, of Nick Tucker's program, of Alex Jones, Glenn Beck, Michael Savage, all these other ones that are telling you the score of the game and why these people are scoring the way they do. In other words, we're telling you what's behind I myself personally. I'm just going to put me in here and not speak for anybody else. I am telling you who is behind the curtain pulling the handles and pushing the buttons and why. Okay? Everybody has a different perspective of what's going on. Alex Jones does, Glenn Beck, Nick Tucker, what we all do. Whole different perspectives from a whole bunch of people. But it all depends on what you are willing to hear and accept. Doesn't take a genius to figure this out. Doesn't take a genius to go out on Las Vegas Boulevard in Las Vegas and see these Homeland Security SUVs parked all over the place or going up and down the main strip down there. Doesn't take a genius, to, a rocket scientist, to figure out what a Federal Protective Services Homeland Security Police Vehicle is doing in Reno, Nevada. Does not take a genius to figure this one out, folks. Okay? I mean, it's not like you're living in a treehouse with a can and a string going somewhere to your friend's house. It's, it's you know, it, I'm not spreading rumors here, folks. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact. It's right out there. It's in your face. There you go. It's right there. 
You can read it in the Wall Street Journal. You can read it in the Reno Gazette Journal. You can read it in, uh, you know, the Associated Press, Reuters, Daily Mail, whatever. You can read it everywhere. But it is entirely upon what you will accept. That's why I say, and, and Nick says it, and Glenn Beck and Alex Jones, they all say it. Don't believe me. Go out and check it out yourself. Go out and check it out yourself. I, I never... It, <laughs> I, I am always amazed. Let's put it this way. I am always amazed that people will look at me and tell me I'm one of those quote-unquote conspiracy theorists. Really? <laughs> no. No, I'm a, con I, I'm a conspiracy realist. Because there is no more theory. The, uh, none of it's a theory anymore, folks. None of it. If you open your eyes and you look and you see, you won't be stupid. It's right there in front of your face. That's to the sheeple out there that are probably yelling at their computer screen at this moment. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh. Your sources are all wrong. Really? Then why don't... Hey, sheeple. Hello. <laughs> Actually, let me do this. I got a message for you, sheeple. And it's this. If you... Just hang on to your shorts there. If you believe that I am wrong, prove it. Prove yourself right. Bring your information that you have that you believe will contradict everything that I'm saying. You bring it to the table of debate, of debate, and we'll talk about it. We'll discuss it. I know your response, too, by the way. Your response is going to be, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah, because you don't know. You never have known. You never will know. That is why you constantly walk around and that's all you do. That's all you know how to do. That's all you ever will do because you sheeple just absolutely have no clue. But I and many others are trying to get you to understand what's happening to get you out of your trance to get you to get your eyes open to see what's going on unless you uh just want to walk around and stay in the you know stay dumbed down and drink your fluoride and eat your gmo hey you know enjoy I've gone from one end of the spectrum of the other in this last hour and a half, haven't I? <laughs> Let's go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Shall we? I don't want to sound like one of those NPR announcers. Where is Al Gore? Anyway. How many of you, how many of you have heard of Marco Rubio? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you all have, right? <laughs> all right. Uh, going over the Spreaker chat, Nick Tucker says he has to go. So, Nick, enjoy your evening. I'll be on for another half hour. If you get home and you want to catch the last five minutes, I'll be here. Hey, have a great evening. Talk to you later. And thank you again for, for all that earlier. So anyway, how many of you have heard of Marco Rubio? From SaveAmericaFoundation.com, Marco Rubio has a chief of staff, Cesar Conda, who worked for George Soros. Yeah. 
Be sure to read the embedded links in this uh, Marco Rubio article. You will come away with a different idea of who his who is on our side. More evidence that Marco Rubio is a Trojan horse plant. Do not fear the enemy, for your enemy can only take your life. It is far better that you fear the media, for they will steal your honor. Fred Brown Bill said that. Caesar Conda is Marco Rubio's chief of staff, and he recently made his tweets private, protected, so the general public can't read uh, them. Caesar Conda has been pushing amnesty for illegals on Twitter and elsewhere as Marco Rubio's PR agent. Conda is also an immigration lawyer, went to work for George Soros before becoming Rubio's chief of staff. Caesar Conda worked on the editorial advisory board of George Soros' magazine, the International Economy magazine. Caesar Conda had been spinning lies about the amnesty bill, about how illegal uh, wouldn't get welfare, wait more than 10 years for citizenship, etc. Those lies have been completely debunked. Another Rubio spokesman, Alex uh, Conant, recently compared illegal aliens living and working in this country to be the institution of slavery. So now you understand why Marco Rubio is so gung-ho for amnesty. He surrounds himself with George Soros monkey like Caesar Conda and other idiots like Alex Conant. Conant. Sad that Rubio is turning, to be a, uh, turning out to be a huge disappointment at this point. It doesn't seem much different than Charlie Crist. Even the left-wing media is in love with Conda. Checking out this gushy review, gu- gushing review of him by leftist bias national journal quote conda has one of the toughest jobs in town right now he has to help rubio negotiate an immigration bill with the rest of the gang of eight that will be palatable to the republicans and not damage his boss's conservative credentials in the process quote that's a tough circle to square but i think caesar is in the is the right man for the job unquote said frank sherry founder and executive director of the pro-immigration reform group america's voice much you want to make a bet America's Voice is nothing but a leftist organization. Quote, Rubio is really lucky to have Caesar Conda as his chief of staff. Unquote. Conda, known among colleagues for his even temper, has been working on the issue since the early 90s when he was part of the group of young libertarian-minded pro-immigration conservatives. What? His government experience runs deep. He worked for former Senator Spencer Abram, Republican of Michigan. Abraham, excuse me, Spencer Abraham of Republican of Michigan, and was an aide to Vice President Dick Cheney. He also spent time in the private sector as a lobbyist and analyst for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and founded the Washington office of a consulting firm called Navigators Global. The left must must think Caesar Conda is their Hispanic Obama or something. There's a link there right below that. It says www.fireandreamitchell.com. Go check that out if you would, please. Bottom of the hour, folks. Yes. Bottom of the hour. You can email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Radio at usa.com. You can go to Free America Radio on Facebook and also freeamericaradio.weebly.com or at Twitter at ULCREV62. I'll be back right after this. Get your morning started with the Morning Brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com.
listen to the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, Friday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. See that car in your rearview mirror? The driver wants to kill you. Don't take it personally. You just happen to be in the way. Now, with a gun in one hand and a steering wheel in the other, this distant runner-up in the human race feels empowered for the very first time. At least our boys finally found a purpose in life. Red Asphalt by Scott Cherney. Available at Amazon.com. Welcome back, welcome back. This is The Views Expressed. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce, for the 22nd of August, 2013. How y'all doing? You can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. freeamericaradio at usa.com. The Views Expressed live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at freeamericaradio.weebly.com. Hope you're all doing okay for this Thursday. Here in Reno, Nevada, we got a bunch of fires, brush fires and acreages burning and smoke all through the city. So, yeah, it's pretty bad, <laughs> you know. Um, plus, it's really, really warm for some reason. Uh, probably all the smoke in the air. So, Marco Rubio is George Soros uh, connected. So, there you go. Hey, earlier today I did, uh, I was on uh, Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. You can find Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Distortedreality.podbean.com. I was on his show. <clears throat> and we talked about the false flag chemical weapon attack in Syria. We also talked about Obama uh, signing the UN Arms Trade Treaty. We also talked about the U.N. and other foreign troops training on U.S. soil. And we also talked about FEMA calling up all these emergency food companies, such as eFoods Direct and others, to find out how long it would take them to get 24 hours worth of food. And by the way, DHS picked up another, I think it was 2.4 million rounds of ammunition. They take your ammunition, they take your food, they poison your water and poison the food that you have. And uh, yeah, let's see, folks, can can we say dictatorship? Because personally, I'm getting sick and tired of it. We no longer have a United States of America. We no longer have the best of the best here on our continent. Our military is strung out all over the world in illegal wars, in countries that we don't need to be in, overthrowing governments that we were allies with at one point. To do what? What is the ultimate goal of the New World Order? Complete and utter world domination <clears throat> and slavery. That's basically what it is. Slavery. Okay. And incrementally, we are having our rights taken away from us. Incrementally, they are... They are disappearing as we speak. 
And we have foreign troops invited by the United Nations on U.S. soil, training with our law enforcement, training with our military. To do what? Hmm, let's see. In, in Pennsylvania, in other states over in that area, about three or four of them, They've had foreign troops training in those areas. Last week, week and a half ago, we had foreign troops land on the beaches in Southern California in an amphibian vehicle, amphibious vehicle. I mean, what more do you want, folks? What more do you want? What more do you want? Do you need someone to shove it in your face and tell you that we are no longer the United States of America? Well, hello, I'm doing it. Look at all of the things that are happening. And if you can't, you got major problems. I look at people, even on Spreaker, I'm seeing different shows popping up like this. And there are shows on Spreaker that are making fun of shows like this. Well, to those people that do that, I hope you're getting your jollies because it's not entertainment and it's a serious thing. I can name a few, but I won't because I'm not going to call them out because they know who they are. And you know what? You can contact me anytime you like. Oh, believe me, I'll be civil, but, you know, I'll, I'll hold my tongue and hold my judgment until you give me a reason not to. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. I, I, here we are, folks, in the United States of America, born out of a need for freedom, sustained by the blood of our grandfathers, great-grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers, and other members of our family. But see, we're not the most innocent country in the world either, folks. When the Western Europeans came over here, there were natives here. We call American Indians. Within, I believe, the first 10 years, and this was back in the late 1500s, early 1600s. In the first 10 years, or in a 10-year period back then, one and a half million people were killed, the natives of this land. Folks, let me tell you something. We didn't free this country from anything. Our ancestors many years ago, 500, 600 years ago, came to this country and slaughtered a whole bunch of people and took the land, okay? The natives that were here were trying to defend themselves from these foreigners. They came over here, and most of them were sick and all this. But there's a bright side to that as, uh, to that as well, folks. There's a positive side. Okay. There were some natives of this country that were already here before the Western Europeans showed up, who were helpful. The story has it that one of the ships that came here, I think it was the Mayflower, not only had slaves on it, but had people that wanted to come to the New World and see what it was like and live here and all that. Most of them died and when they landed here, they didn't have too many, you know, people left. And most, you know, some of them died as well. And some of the natives here helped them survive. I think that's where that phrase came from. 
Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. So we, we didn't kill all of them. But people started making their way into the country and started making their way around the, the northeast. And by the way, they came into Newfoundland up in Canada and worked their way down through there into what is now Maine and New York and Connecticut and Rhode Island and all that area. You got to go back in, in history, folks, and look this stuff up. I did. It's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting when you read the history of how America really was put together and how many people were killed just to get this country to what it is today, or even to the point of 1775, 1776. Now, think about it, folks. I'm just going to put a year out here 1550 that's there were people here western europeans here at that time 200 years later 1750 how many people were here by the time the declaration of independence was signed and we gained our freedom from europe there were 13 colonies and somewhere of i, I don't know how many people of that time what the population was of those 13 altogether but it had to be over two or three million people or more people started making their way out west they started moving towards Ohio or what is Ohio now a lot of that stuff was just uncharted land and we just said we're going west some people hopped in their, you know, wagons, covered wagons, and took the horses and left. And then in 18, was it 1849? Somebody came back to the East Coast and went, did you know there's gold out in California? You know, and then the rush was on. But even then, now look at look at it this way, folks. You got to look back in history and find all this. Everybody talks about slavery, this slavery, that black slaves, this right. Did you know there were Chinese slaves, white slaves? Oh yeah, there were white slaves in America. Did you know that? You didn't know that, did you? Well, I just told you. Go look it up. There were white slaves, Hispanic slaves, a bunch of things that your history books in your high school and your kids' high school aren't teaching you. This brings me into today, the 22nd of August, 2013. A couple of weeks ago, we had this big, these big stories about Trayvon Martin and and George Zimmerman being acquitted and all this, that, and the other thing. And people were up in arms. Ah, throw him out. Really? Really? You're going to sit there and tell me that a person cannot, when he's getting beat up, defend himself or herself, depending on the situation. Because I've just read stories where women have shot guys coming into their house, breaking into their homes. And you look back in history and you ask yourself, these people that were here long before the Western Europeans had to defend themselves. And then ask yourself this. Are we doing the right thing? Here it is, 22nd of August, 2013, and we have a dictator in office. We don't have a president. We have a dictator in the office of president. I don't even want to put the title on him as president. He's a dictator. He's a criminal. Hey, NSA, I said it. What are you going to do about it? I look for the best in everybody, even the NSA... I look for the best of everybody. 
I try to find those jewels of posit- positiveness in somebody. To say, you know what, they're not that bad. I can't find it in this administration. In him. In his inner circle. By the way, his inner circle consists of Muslim Brotherhood members. Believe me. No, I, I said that. Believe me. There, there are. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, go look it up. So are we doing the right thing? Yeah, I believe we are. I believe that myself, Nick Tucker, uh, 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 Glenn Beck, Alex Jones, Michael Savage, all these people, Josh Tolley, uh, every one of us, Mark Dice, Adam Kokesh, you know, we're all getting out there in your faces and shoving this information in your face and telling you, look, here it is. We live in a police state. And if you don't believe it, and if you don't want to believe it, Bye, have a nice day. Hope you enjoy your stay at the nearest FEMA camp near you, because that's where you'll be. We had a revolution in this country in 1775, 1776, and we beat the biggest military in the world of that time, the British Army. We kicked them out of here. And I think it's time that we start considering some severe and swift action in defense of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. I was born a free man. And the rule of law is the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. I am not going to die a slave in the North American Union. That's my statement. And I'm sticking to it. What about you? Are you going to do the right thing? Are you going to step up to the plate? do the right thing are you gonna have are you are you going to do the right thing i mean it, it, it amazes me that people will look out and see all this stuff happening and then insist that oh it's okay obama did you know promise that he was going to do this and do that i may not like some of his policies but he did promise that he was i got something to say to that Get your head out of your ass. Stop with the bull crap. Stop pretending that everything's okay. Stop pretending that that uh, everything's all hunky dory. Stop pretending. Because the more that you the more that you turn away the more that you close your eyes the more that you the more that you would rather want the fantasy than the reality that's when you get the problems you become complacent you become really non I was going to say non-compliant, but that's not really what I'm looking for. You, you become sick. Your environment is sick. Therefore, you are sick. I use that term loosely, by the way. Use that word loosely. When you grow up in a society that says you are a free person, you are, you know protected by the Constitution of the United States of America. You have the right to do whatever it is you want to do, to a point, of course. You believe it. 
But then on the other side of that coin, you go to school, you, you read your history books, you get the teacher telling you, the instructor, the professor telling you certain things about history when you yourself already know that it's a complete and utter lie, and you try to correct them, you get shafted. I did that when I was a junior in high school, told the teacher, hey, did you know that this is not right here? Oh, well, it's the curriculum that we have to teach. Go along to get along, we'll get you screwed. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And I'll be back right after this. Get your morning started with the morning brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to Radio Rock the Blitz. Blogspot.com. Listen to the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, Friday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. See that car in your rearview mirror? The driver wants to kill you. Don't take it personally. You just happen to be in the way. Now, with a gun in one hand and a steering wheel in the other, this distant runner-up in the human race feels empowered for the very first time. At least our boys finally found a purpose in life. Red Asphalt by Scott Cherney. Available at Amazon.com. This is the Views Express Live. We're coming down to the home stretch. I just want to get into this one last article of the evening from CBSNews.com. You just will pull out your hair on this one, folks. It's. I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to ask you this before I read the article. How much do you think minimum minimum wage should be? How much do you think minimum wage should be? I'm serious. How much do you think minimum wage should be? CBSNews.com. Fast food workers urged to stage nationwide strike. It's from Money Watch. A coalition of labor, religious, and other groups are calling for a nationwide strike of fast food employees on August 29th. The campaign building on a flurry of one-day work stoppages this year at franchises around the U.S. highlights the efforts by unions to enlist workers in the cause and heighten the impact on, uh, of the strikes. Labor supporters say that fast food workers are poorly paid and their low wages subsidize the profits of multinational corporations. Let me interject something here, folks. People that work at Walmart part-time are uh, getting food stamps. They're getting uh, housing subsidies because they're not paid enough. So, again, how much should minimum wage be? Continuing, but many fast food restaurant owners and other critics of the strikes say that profit margins at the franchise are so thin that higher wages would put the companies out of business, costing workers their jobs. One, fast food workers, have it your way elsewhere. 
Number two, 80% of the U.S. adults face near poverty, unemployment survey finds. Number three, even as economy rebounds, income inequality festers. And number four, front group ups battle against minimum wage hike. The call for a strike came this week from a public relations agency that counts both the Service Employees International Union and the United uh, uh, the United Food and Commercial Workers as clients. Both labor groups are among dozens of local and national religious, uh, political, and union groups supporting the call for strikes. Last month, the same group supported walkouts in some fast food restaurants across uh, seven cities. Others that have supported the event are the United Auto Workers, Presbyterian Church USA, individual churches and synagogues like St. John's Catholic Church of St. Louis, and some members of the Cong Congressional Progressive Caucus, Congressional Progressive Caucus, including Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison. And it goes into a wide range of things here, folks. So click on the uh, article there. Fast food workers urged to stage nationwide strike on Free America Radio on Facebook and read the rest of that. Bottom line, folks, um, you got a problem. You got a problem. Okay, how much should minimum wage be? I myself personally, I'll state it here and put it on record. Abolish the minimum wage. Institute a fair market living wage and a flat tax. People keep more of their money and the economy turns around and gets better. Period. Hey, number crunchers. Crunch them numbers. And send me your results to freeamericaradio at usa.com. freeamericaradio at usa.com. I want to hear from you. How much should minimum wage be? How much should minimum wage be? Here in Nevada, it's uh, eight twenty-five if the company doesn't offer health care, and seven fifty-five if they do. But then again, most companies are not working you full time because of Obamacare. UPS is uh, not laying off, but uh, ending. Uh, benefits for 13 I think 1300 employees or something like that because of Obamacare most companies now are going to completely gut the 40 hour week and just uh, you know give you like 30 or 32 or whatever it is thanks to Obamacare you can go to uh, I believe it's on free America radio on Facebook yeah uh, UPS announced that they will have to reduce health insurance plans provided to their employees because Obamacare makes their current health insurance plans drastically more expensive. So uh, all you proponents of Obamacare, shut up. You have no idea what you're talking about. Okay? Oh, no, I'll say it. I, I shoot straight from the hip, people. Oh, that's rude telling people to shut up. Okay. Be quiet and go stick your head in the sand. How's that? <laughs> is, is that better? <laughs> hey, folks, come join me tomorrow. Views Express Live, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Also, you can come check out the Wayne S. Pierce Show, 12 hey, noon. Whoa, that's the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm the only one here, folks. I'm, I'm the only one running the board, okay? That's what I do. There's the one. Come join me tomorrow at 12 noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on the Wayne S. Beer Show. Got a lot to talk about tomorrow. I may go two hours. Who knows? Come join, him, join me tomorrow on the Views Express Live tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right there on Spreaker.com. And remember, folks, you can also go to freeamericaradio.weebly.com to listen to the show. Remember this. We the people have the power, for we are America. America.